emotion is one of the things that I mentioned at the top, uh, that we as human beings have a very rich uh, ability to exchange emotions and to empathize with one another. Um, is there any, uh, how should we say, neural evidence that other creatures can share this ability with us or can do it with us? Yes, actually, we, we, we tend to we tend always to, to think uh, that, that, that we are we are unique and in, in many of the functions and behaviors uh, that we display and, and I think there has been ample evidence from the panel that this is indeed not the case. Um, but there, there is certainly much to learn from other species. We stumble one day on a very strange type of neurons in the human brain that that cell that is, that is very thin and elongated, like a spindle, and we call them spindle cells. Why, what is a spindle, by the way? It's, it's like a fusiform shape neuron. So if you would take the surface of the brain here and the bottom of the cerebral cortex here, that cell would be located like this. And again, that is, that is a very unusual structure for a neuron. Most neurons look like triangles, or like little ovoid structures, but not like a big giant spindle. So what do these cells do? And why would this cell type be located only in a particular layer of the cerebral cortex in only two regions of the cerebral cortex? So what are these regions? The anterior cingulate cortex and the frontoinsular cortex are regions that we know from functional brain imaging in humans to be involved in a variety of behaviors and functions that are, again, these extraordinarily human type of behavior, such as social awareness, empathy, theory of mind, you know, type of things like I can, I can think, I can see that Jad there is doing pretty fine right now. And that he's probably thinking, why is that guy single me out now? <laughs> <laughs> so that, ty that type of capacity, but judgment, morality, emotion regulation, all of these very high order cortical processing uh, functions that we think are profoundly associated with, uh, with our brain. So they are in these regions, and in a quite fascinating manner, it was found by a colleague of mine, uh, John Oldman at Caltech and uh, William Seeley at UCSF, that in some particular case of dementia, these neurons are specifically and dramatically affected. Now, these people who have a type of dementia known as frontotemporal dementia lose completely their social awareness. They have a blunt affect. They have no empathy. They have no theory of mind, and they have a loss of these neurons. Ah, that's interesting. These neurons might be at the basis of this particular network that subserve these functions. Now, our next step was, okay, this is great. We have a, 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 human, a human neuron. Let's look in the macaque monkey. Why? Because the macaque monkey is an animal that is used in research and is used in neuroscience a lot as, as a model for humans. We can do a lot with macaque monkey. We can study them. Uh, we can study them for their behavior. We can elicit response from them and so on. And we found nothing. Macaque monkeys do not have spindle cells in their brain. Hmm. So the next logical step, of course, was to look at the brain of the chimpanzees and bingo, chimpanzees do have spindle cells. They are our closest relative. The bonobos, we are not forgetting the bonobos. No. <laughs> bonobos have plenty. And in <laughs> fact, the bonobo is the species in which the distribution of spindle cells mimic the closest that in the human. Surprise, surprise. And uh, so just to put things in context, there, this is a human brain. This now is a chimpanzee brain. So you see it's a slightly smaller brain, but lots of convolution, lots of complexity in there. Here is a species that doesn't have 
spindle cells. That's the brain of a gibbon. So the lesser head doesn't have spindle cells. So it's really something that occurred in the hominids. And at this point, we were very happy, right? Because that was now a hominid-specific neuron, so we could actually date it. That's a neuron that was 16 million years old. It's a recent thing in evolution, and it's only among us. Then, of course, I had the curiosity to look in other species. You've seen that I like whales. And this is the brain of a fin whale. So that's big, OK? That's a brain that is about that big. So that poses other technical complexities. And of course, in that species, we found plenty of spindle cells. These are, these are, we find this, these cells also in the, in the elephant. And the story almost ends here. So elephant, large cetacean, large primates. And these are all the species that have a very active social life, that have a sense of self-awareness. They can recognize themselves in the mirror. They can recognize individual and say, OK, this is x, this is y, this is z. Yeah. They, in many cases, probably have a sense of empathy. Certainly, it's been documented uh, in, a, in elephant. They are large, large animals. They all reproduce relatively slowly. And um, they all have a sense of capacity for communication. So that is a set of very particular, uh, very particular capabilities in, uh, a, among these animals. 